Hey everybody, Jungle Jerry here with Tiki71. In my ongoing effort to live vicariously through Kiwi Kate's Challenger, I'm doing another upgrade today. This is a Mishimoto oil catch can. Why would you want an oil catch can? Well, you've got a positive crankcase ventilation system called the PVC valve. You can get blow-by that goes around your cylinders and actually can get into the air intake system. When that happens, it pulls it from the crankcase and it ventilates up to the air intake. You can actually get oil in there and there's uh, nothing to burn it there. It's just the valves and it can start to gunk it up. Mishimoto makes some good looking stuff. Uh, this is the oil catch can here. However, they don't give you any instructions. It is pretty straightforward. Now, if you've got one of these Mishimoto oil catch cans, you might notice there's not one, there's nothing on here to tell you in or out. And the reason for that is, is you can hook it up to either way. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a minute. The nice thing about this is it also has a sight gauge here. So you can see as you start to get full. On the bottom, it's got a magnetic plug on here. This actually has a magnet. So if you have any kind of metal contaminants or anything like that in the oil that it's catching and keeping out of your intake, system it's going to catch it right there uh, some of the catch cans that you get you can actually unscrew them uh, from the bracketing system in the vehicle this is just a complete whole one and you have to drain it right there I bought some uh, some separate PVC tubing it's all black and I've got some gathers that are on the way from the Amazon ferries and so later on I will use that but right now let's get this off well, these things just pop right off this right here is the PCV line. And so we're gonna take this thing off here and here. What happens is that blow-by comes out of your crankcase and it shoots up into here and quite a bit of oil will come out. You'll be amazed after about 3,000 miles. Just YouTube uh, search oil catch cans and you will see what people are pulling out after only 3,000 miles or in between oil changes. It's quite amazing. And all of that stuff is going up here into your intake system and getting on your valves and gunking it up like I said. I'm gonna take this little hook tool right here and I'm gonna work the glue off of both of those and pop that line out. I finally managed to get that, uh, get that thing off of there and uh, it took some coaxing. You just gotta keep working at it and get a nice long screwdriver and work that rubber. Uh, I also turned this this way because I have the catch can installed over here on the, uh, on the side fender. The problem that I ran into, Mish Mishimoto, the black tube that I had was too dead gum small. Uh, I read online 15, 30 seconds was the uh, right size. It wasn't. It barely fit onto this and I couldn't get it onto either one of those. The other problem that I ran into is I've read something online about those to use half inch. Uh, that doesn't work for what I want to do because right back here is where I'm going to go into a piece of rubber and it's just not big enough so I had to uh, run to the store it's uh, 445 on a Sunday so you know yeah and it's winter and I'm running out of daylight you can see right here a half inch coupler ain't gonna get it and so I bought a 5 8 inch and that should work but I got to hustle now the other thing is Mishimoto gives you about yay much line and when I try to get over there to it I can almost get to where I need to get it to, but then I don't have anything for the other line. So you can take the hose that Mishimoto gives you and toss it. I got some new hose and I managed to get some red stuff. It does fit the catch can deal. So I'm gonna route one to the one down in the crankcase and then I'm gonna route the longer one over there with the 5 eighths. If you've got some PVC cutters, they work great for this stuff. I'm just gonna take that and get myself a nice clean super clean cut there and get that on before I do that I'm going to throw that up on now yeah buddy probably should have done this in the summertime when I wouldn't be running out of daylight so now I'm going to take this one and measure out here for that one of the things Mishimoto says with this catch can is it's designed to have that cold difference so they want it away from the engine but then they don't give you enough hose to get it away from the engine cut that nice and even there so we can put a clamp on her there this thing's going to have uh, pressure on it so coming out of the crankcase so i want it on good and tight 
what I need to do now is I got to measure out. I want to keep this line nice and neat. This is the one that's going to go into the air intake. So I'm going to keep them together though. And I need to have that one cut right about there. Okay, we got her done there. There have been some casualties. <laughs> Thicker gloves, always recommended there. With only a couple of minutes of daylight to spare. I'm going to get the engine cover back on and we will start her up here. There we are. Many hours later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was not the best place to mount that can. It's a pretty tall can, and the way this fender is here, it kind of bulges out on the inside. It was just a little bit too tall for it, and so I ran around trying to get it fixed. I'm going to open this up and kind of show you the fix that I put on it. I hate doing stuff half-assed. I'm full ass or nothing but I kind of had to half-ass it so that she could get to work yesterday. I'm off today, and so she's taking my truck, and uh, I've got the car, and we're going to fix that. And I'm going to do another video here in a little bit on installing a K&N uh, <laughs> 63 series cold air intake on this. Going to go a lot smoother than the Mishimoto thing. But let me pop this hood and show you the temporary fix I did so she could get to work yesterday. So I had it mounted up here, and it was up high, it actually hit right there on this bulge that comes down. It looked like it was going to be okay. What I should have done was made sure that it was mounted underneath this area here. Uh, and really and truly, there's not a whole lot of room in the uh, V6 GT for putting stuff. Yeah, I could probably put it on that back firewall. There's some holes there. I want it to be cold or colder and in an area that's not generating as much heat. The heat, as you travel in the vehicle, of course, is going to go back towards the firewall. So ideally, I would have it right here in this area here. And so I'm going to try to, I've got some brackets, I've got some more bolts. The other problem that I ran into, let me show you this. This was my pathetic redneck engineering to get us by, and I had to finish it in the dark. But the Mishimoto bolts, I believe if these bolts aren't in, air will get into the can, so I put the bolts back on. But they stripped out when I tried to undo them. And so I had to, I had to spend about an hour with pliers getting them off so that I could get the can off and then take the bracket off. And, uh, and then I had to remount this thing. I, I pushed this little tab back and then uh, mounted to that. But this is absolutely ramshackle ugly, and the can is not straight up and down. It's at probably about a 30 to 45 degree angle. That's no bueno, too. So I'm going to fix this today. Uh, we're going to make it look better. So i got some stainless steel brackets. I've got bolts. But you can see this fender is right here, and uh, it was just hitting this thing. And really and truly, the only place really you could put the thing is right here, and maybe right here if you had something come out, but then it's messing with these lines, and I really don't want to do that either. Maybe I could put it right there. I just don't know. I may, I may be forced to route this thing on the uh, firewall, but I'd really like to not do that. This was uh, rated as a small catch can. I'd say it's uh, over eight inches tall. That's kind of a problem here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some thinking and I'll get back to you here. And the other thing that I'm going to do today is I'm gonna fix that connection there. I just don't, that 5 8 uh, plastic, it got boogered up and it was a pain in the ass to get on there. Everything else went together pretty good with the uh, red tubing. This red line where it comes in and uh, and then continues on to the intake, it's not in all the way, and I don't like that. It's half-assed, and I don't want to be half-assed. What I've done is gone and uh, gotten me some three-quarter by three-quarter coupling, and so I'm going to slide that over both of them and tighten that down, and then I'm going to have a much cleaner, good connection there, and I definitely want that, so we're going to get that done too. Yeah, I just don't like the way that thing turned out there. We're going to fix that. I got it to the point where it would get us by, uh, and after I got all, everything hooked up Sunday night and kind of situated, started it up, uh, got the engine oil hot, 
no leaks, nothing like that, but this is just unacceptable. I don't like that. When it comes to getting these tubes off, uh, if you got one of these little pick deals, it sure is handy because you can get in there and create a little gap. And if it's got glue and stuff like that on there, you can kind of scrape it off. That and a screwdriver for getting uh, problematic hoses off is uh, about the only way to go there, I guess. If you've got a better way to get these things off, I am all ears. Post me a comment down below and let me know. Now let's see if this thing is going to work here. I think it will. Oh yeah, that is much, much easier. That last little bit is stiff and that's a good thing. <laughs> that's what she said. What? All right, let's plug her in. Definitely not as long. Work that bad boy in there. There we go. That's good. That looks good. That is a much better looking connection. I like that. We're good there. Good deal. So what I'm going to do now is unscrew this top connection here, that way I can work with the can and not have to mess with these hoses. I'm going to get the can where I want it once I disconnect that uh, stripped <laughs> bolt there. It was working, I got a little bit of oil on there, so that's good. <sighs> Success. Alright, I got her out. You can see how big this thing is here. Uh, it's about seven, eight inches, and here is the screw walled out. That might be one of the reasons they put the magnet on the bottom to catch the metal from the uh, strip screws you're going to have. <laughs> so I went down to the hardware store and I got some machine screws with uh, slotted or Phillips head. So that's going to be a whole lot easier. It's going to get a better grab and hopefully she won't strip that way. Kiwi K don't know. There's holes all in this thing. I drilled one tiny little hole right here because what I'm going to do, I figured out a little bracket here to where I can put this thing right there and attach it just like so and i can actually reduce the hose uh, sizes as well that way but it's going to work right there and i'll use loctite on all the fittings here and i've actually got some go mango touch-up paint and so i'm going to shake this thing up and i'm going to get the insides of this real good clean this area up here and we'll uh, do that okay now I'm going to hit these threads with some thread locker here. I'll put a little bit in the nut as well. I'm going to come back through and what I'll eventually do here is I will scuff this uh, stuff up and I will use the uh, touch-up paint on it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna redo my lines and trim them down so that I'll have less run here and so once we get them trimmed down I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, get the main lugs back onto the oil can there and tighten those down get the clamps tight one thing that I really do like is the fact that I've got a really tight connection now up at the intake uh, with the brass fittings, that three-quarter by three-quarter coupling really made a big difference there and got it nice and tight and clean and everything looks good. And I've got shorter lines now too, so that's a good thing because uh, less run, uh, quicker to get to the oil can and back up into the intake. And as far as the look there, yeah, it ain't perfect, but it's a damn sight better than what it was earlier. I will be on the lookout for a better bracket, though. Uh, something a little nicer and cleaner with less juts in it. <laughs> but it's, uh, I think it'll work. Now it's the moment of truth. What we need to do now is start this thing up and check for codes and leaks. No code so far, that's good. Okay, we're gonna check for leaks now. Back here. I know with the old gloves there, we're good there. We're good there.
and we're good there. I sure hope it shuts. Take it nice and easy this time. Good to go. <laughs> Well, we got her done. That's the oil catch can video for the V6 2021 GT Challenger. It ain't pretty, it ain't perfect, but it'll work. Uh, I'll take it for now. I'm gonna find a better bracket uh, to put on that thing. I'll get on the hunt for that and we'll dress that up and make it look as best we can. But I do wanna thank you for watching. Uh, if you found it helpful, uh, share it. If you found it funny, share it. <laughs> it helps the channel out and uh, we do appreciate that. Coming up next, we're gonna be doing the K&N 63 series cold air intake it's going to go much much more smoothly uh, they have instructions with it and they're well engineered so <laughs> i'm looking forward to that it's going to make this sucker breathe and kick off a little extra horsepower and it's going to be fantastic but thank you so much for watching we do appreciate it if you have any questions or you want to roast me just do it down in the comments below uh, i'll be looking forward to that and we will see you in the next video have a great day